the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. When evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
oneness in Christ. Of such differences is a Christian's life made up, and through such a variety of conditions and reports, is our way to heaven. And we should be careful in all things to approve ourselves to God. The gospel, when faithfully preached and fully received, betters the condition even of the poorest. They say that but before they righteously spend and diligently employ their time to useful purposes, they save and gain by religion and thus are made rich both for the world to come and for this when compared with their sinful, wastefully extravagant state before they receive the gospel. And it is through this passage that I receive a special message, and that I personally, and perhaps not as shaken by many, by the events in Charleston this past week, through my own trials and tribulations. In a deeply personal search, I've spent my life asking why. And in doing so, I've come across countless cases of man's inhumanity to man. Starting with my own family. So, I was shaken from an early age and have been dealing with a deeply felt personal grief. But in doing so, I have been strengthened to withstand times like these and to accept them for the horrors that they are. I am here to tell you that we must take this for what it is and learn from the forgiveness that's even already and expressed by family of the fallen. Through Christ our Lord, we learn the immense power of forgiveness and stand in awe of His power. As witnessed in the final reading, we find Jesus is back at the Sea of Galilee, this time teaching in parables. It's so crowded that Jesus sits in a boat while the audience listens from shore. Jesus opens with a story about someone who was sowing seeds. Some seeds land on the road, and the birds gobble them up. Other seeds fall on rocky ground, but the plants die after springing up for lack of soil. And others die because they landed in weeds. Just when you start to wonder whether this guy knows anything about farming, Jesus tells of seeds in good soil that become exceedingly productive. Another good illustration is the mustard seed, which is the smallest of seeds we had presented to us last week. It grows into a huge bush whose shady branches provide refuge for birds. Now in our reading today, the narrator concludes that all of this is indicative of the way Jesus taught in general, for example, in parables. People generally understand according to their ability, while the disciples have the privilege of hearing Jesus' special explanations of these complex illustrations in private. Teaching from a boat has its perks. After class, Jesus and his disciples can sail across the Sea of Galilee to the opposite side. But this scene, uh, serene as it is, this little cruise turns ugly when the boat fills with water during a dangerous storm. Jesus is sleeping like a baby. Afraid they are going to die, the disciples urgently, urgently wake Jesus up. Jesus orders the storm to shut up and be quiet. After all, he's trying to sleep. The storm stops and everything is calm again. That's just cool. Jesus asks his disciples why they are afraid. They must not trust him yet. His disciples are now even more afraid. They want to know who this guy is who can boss around storms like this. It is through these scriptures that we learn of the awesome power of God and our Lord, and not to fear, for it is out of our hands. But to live faithfully, for we know not when the time comes. Nevertheless, when it does, we are blessed with eternal salvation through God's grace.